If you're joining us today for the first time, this is part 10 of a multi-part series designed to help introduce and discuss the source material for the HBO show Watchmen. If you're unfamiliar with the story, or like to start from the beginning of a story, you may want to see our episode on issue 1. All right, and welcome to Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen, the show where we watch the HBO show Watchmen. I'm Scott. I'm Sam. And how you doing today, Sam? Oh, oh yeah, I'm 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 I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I am good, Scott. I am good, we have, buddy. We have now heard from the zombie Sam. Zombie for... <laughs> <laughs> brains. <laughs> The, okay. The tattered Sam. <laughs> yeah, we kept we kept it going. We kept the cast going during the zombie apocalypse, and <laughs> Sam kills came, but I couldn't do this by myself. So, <laughs> We're zombie the... Sam is in the house. <laughs> Z- zombie oh, Sam doing the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh man. All right, what we got going on here, Scott? Well, today, uh, today we are going to be talking about Chapter Ten of the limited series Watchmen, oh, uh, the DC excellent. comic series, one of our favorites. Yes. Uh, yes. It's not a surprise, I guess, if you're listening still, that we've been doing this for uh, nine uh, nine chapters before. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the good news we're, is uh, we're still are, chugging along here, just yeah. chugging along. Chewing our way through this stuff. So if you, the good news is if you've come back, there will be more to uh, more to see. Yes, yes. yes. Thank, well, thank you for see, coming back, Jeez, too. You know. <laughs> yes, we appreciate your uh, multiple listener. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, before we jump into some housekeeping, you can definitely email us feedback uh, at watchingwatchmen at nerdcyclopedia.com, mm-hmm. uh, which is our domain. It's our website. Yep, yep, yep. yep. So Visit us at um, Nerdcyclopedia as well while you're on that website, you know, um, checking us out. Um, you can tweet us at Watchmen Podcast One. That's right. We could not afford the T, so we got the one. Extra slash was too much money. <laughs> uh, they, they just one brushstroke is all we got. So, uh, so today we're going to be talking about a uh, a pretty dense, <laughs> it's a dense chapter from a standpoint of plot. If you finished it, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, Revelations yeah. abound, and uh, very different appear- from the last chapter, which was not oh, so yeah. much plot, but it was very, very interesting character. Um, you know, um, um, what I want to say here, just, just the ca- character revelations. Yeah, yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, finding out about Lori's parentage is uh, a oh, big man. reveal to big, just big, drop. Big, big mic drop, Boom. <laughs> as they Boom. would say, as the yeah. kids would say. <laughs> That's right. A big mic drop for for that particular chapter, but yeah, like Scott said we we're getting into something pretty dense here. And if you thought that was the big reveal, Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> like obviously this Uh-oh. chapter is much more Uh-oh. even bigger than that. Yeah, yeah. Defcon so, two. <laughs> yeah, Defcon two, exactly right. Two pale riders, two riders were approaching. It's a uh, a reference to the apocalypse. <laughs> so that's the title of this chapter, apocalyptic chapter. Um, this is all happening at the same time, simultaneously to the last chapter. So these are two simultaneous events, essentially, okay. that we are seeing. All so right. pretty nifty. Yeah, uh, that's, that's pretty decent. I actually didn't um, realize that. <laughs> yeah, so Dr. Manhattan still has a return, which is why we know that. Okay. He says, I'm coming back. So he's still in there, and we see this, the chaos <laughs> left in the wake of uh, Dr. Manhattan's departure and, of course, you know, the wake of the... Uh, the breakout of Rorschach and the uh, right. the raid of the Owl's Nest. Yeah, every, every, everything is just going to, to, to shit. <laughs> yes, things aren't great. So we're, we're we start here. The cover of Chapter Ten is the first panel of Chapter Ten, which is the radar screen mm-hmm. at uh, you know the president's secret base, probably NORAD or maybe Area Fifty One. Who knows where they're supposed to be? Somewhere deserty. <laughs> and Air Force One and Air Force Two land. And uh, Richard Nixon <laughs> and Gerald Ford come out of their uh, mm-hmm. Air Force One and Two. Richard Nixon carrying a literal metal football. <laughs> Good old tricky <laughs> dick, huh? A tricky dick, still in power, still holding all the nuclear codes in his lap. Uh, he's ferried by helicopter into the bunker. 
And, uh, you know, things aren't doing great. Uh, Mrs. Nixon wasn't allowed to come. (laughs) (laughs) Saw Mrs. Nixon in safety. She didn't like that. And uh, basically, they discussed uh, first strike. They discussed, you know, there's tanks massing in Germany. Um, You know, things are escalating. Um, You know, what do they say? Oh, they may have a point about uh, things like that panic. Their panic must be genuine. They have a point. We've both been on full alert, right? They say that. Right. And then uh, Dick Nixon sits down with his hand on the football. It's Kissinger and Gordon Liddy and Gerald Ford look on in the background. Um, yeah, literal so football here. Wow, that is funny. Huh. And he says, and we sit and we wait. And then we cut to uh, Rorschach and Night Owl. Huh. Under the sea. Huh. Singing a boisterous song about the sea creature. <laughs> uh, I don't think they, they shouldn't have put that in the movie. It didn't belong there. <laughs> <laughs> it was weird when Rorschach started swimming around. Yeah, uh, um, one, one of those things where they were just <clears throat> cutting a little bit too, um, you know, uh, to to the point, you know. Um, yeah. Like being so obvious anyway. <laughs> so this is ominous. This is an ominous scene, right? I mean, yeah. we're supposed to be terrified. I mean, it seems pretty inevitable that there will be a World War Three here. Yeah. And an 80s-style World War Three where everything burns. Mm-hmm. Everything burns. <laughs> uh, remember the... Um, there were, I think it was a couple chapters ago they were talking about options and they were going to lose most of the eastern seaboard. <laughs> like yeah. That was going to happen. They right. were like, is that acceptable? Well, most of the fallback will just drift across into Mexico. Uh, <laughs> so it's okay. Yeah, so, you know, the Mexicans, they don't really, you know, um, not too concerned about that and everything. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> now that the boring geopolitics is over, Let's get to this detective story, which all is right. Rorschach and Night Owl. Rorschach is uh, very much tired of sitting in Archie all night. They got some sleep. Mm-hmm. He says, look, they busted you out of prison. We're wanted people. We got to be careful. Rorschach's like, it's been hours. We can't go up. Dan's like, I won't take you up during the day mm-hmm. when they can just see us. Mm-hmm. Um, he says, it's good to be working with us. Then uh, Rorschach says, it's a pity Miss uh, Giuseppe couldn't stay with us. And, and Dan's like, yes, yes, it is a pity. Oh, he man. says, oh, he's, Mar- he's sad. He's just sad. He said. So they pop up out of the docks, <coughs> and Rorschach convinces Dan to go back to his uh, apartment, sort of describing where he's going. They talk about the mass killer theory, and we get uh, into the back way into Rorschach's apartment, which includes hang on by fingernails and never look down, right? <laughs> he jumps back into his apartment. If you the look po- at the um the last panel in his, in his apartment, it's the same panel that... um. Or the same position he was when he climbed into um, the comedian's place, mm-hmm. you know, at the Absolutely. very at the very beginning, um, beginning of the whole series. <laughs> so mm-hmm. the exact same position. So I guess you know this is the way Rorschach climbs into windows. <laughs> yeah, it echoes that original mm-hmm. investigation that he did. And when you know, remember how he outsmarted the police there? Mm-hmm. Well, the first thing he does is say, "Up, oh, the police didn't find my stash." And so they didn't find his mask or his face, his clothes, his extra set of Rorschach stuff, mm-hmm. and his journal. Um, then his landlady comes and he calls his landlady a whore. <laughs> Says I didn't make sexual advances to her. And then he sees her children, and sort of seems to feel some sort of empathy and compassion for them. And says, "Let's get out of here." Yeah, yeah. He he looks at the child, and you know he sort of I guess sees himself a little bit. You know, but. Mm-hmm. Considering how much empathy <laughs> Rorschach can muster up, he just looks. <laughs> it's okay, he just stares well, it's at him with go. dead eyes. Just <laughs> okay, mm. let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no wanna don't wanna yell at this child. <laughs> oh man. Well, it's experience that echoes also Rorschach's youth upbringing, right? I mean, he yeah. feels his empathy mm-hmm. for this kid because he grew up in a house where you know people were saying those things about his mother all the time, mm-hmm. and he was always having to. To yeah. deal with those things, so yeah, uh, you, you kind of see why he uh, lays off and then just leaves. Yeah, um, the um, landlady she she just looks at him. Is she she recognizes because I mean at this point Rorschach's identity has been revealed all over the news mm-hmm. and everything. So she's just shocked, you know, um, that he he's even back there and even out of prison. <laughs> right. You know, so um, <clears throat> she's I guess she's afraid he's going to do something and everything and you know towards the end uh the the page here she just sits down and cries you know after um you know she uh, after they leave well let's not discount that this man is covered in blood well yeah he is drenched <laughs> in blood i mean you know what i mean he's obviously pretty, pretty like much. you said a, 
notorious killer and like sort of universally recognized bad, you know, scary person. And well, uh, well, now he's an- here. A- another thing she okay, so she did, um, and I guess in the news she accused him of sexual advances. <laughs> Oh yeah, you know she which made, which she made to be. <laughs> So so she's like, um, okay, uh, well, okay, I got misquoted. That wasn't true. Yeah, <laughs> well, right. we heard. Well, I specifically heard you say, <laughs> yeah, um, that that you know I did these things to you and everything. So you know she and Warshak, of course, mm-hmm. you know for, for Warshak, this is the worst possible thing she could say. He's like disgusted by these sorts of immoral people. Is right. probably the way he would try to say it. Right. <clears throat> so. For him, it's like, you know, ew, no way I would do that. So he feels like he needs to teach her a lesson. Right. Decides not to. Right. When uh, he realizes that that would make him an awful monster and the type of person, you know, he hated. Well, it's also uh, also comments upon just people's way of um, just piling on, you know, just Mm -hmm. stuff just to pile on and everything. Now, was it necessary for her to say that, you know, she she made uh, or Warshak made sexual advances and stuff when it didn't happen? Or did she just want to, you know, extended drama on the news because she was on the news and just wanted to get that attention just to paint him in a worse picture than he's already been painted and everything you know Mm -hmm. um this stuff didn't happen so you know why put the extra stuff on (laughs) right right the stuff he did was pretty bad (laughs) like we you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. all the all the extrajudicial executions not not so great yeah so, not so we can focus great on that but, instead, but, right? <laughs> but, but, I, but i guess morally you know he felt right. that, okay well i'm not like how you 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 um portrayed me in the news so why would you say something like that you know mm-hmm. <laughs> besperch my name <laughs> yeah besperch my good name the good name of rorschach the uh, hobo right <laughs> my good hobo name what's your I, hobo name by I'm, the way i'm i'm a bad man but you know i'm not that bad <laughs> I may be a hobo, I may steal beans, but I got my name. <laughs> rail car Lenny. <laughs> They're all rail car, box car. You can pick between the two. All right. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, my name is Wally Caboose. Wally Caboose, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, everybody's got uh, Batman tendencies and obviously hiding the. Hiding like a bat suit everywhere pretty, <laughs> is kind of a bad man tendency, right? Pretty much, uh, pretty much. The cops couldn't find his stash. That's what I wanted to draw attention to when he climbs in the window. Uh-huh. Uh, they also couldn't find the comedian's stash. They weren't able to locate either. So that's another echo to the beginning. Great echo. I didn't even realize it like that as well. <laughs> so so great echo. of. of he outcops the cops. <laughs> m- yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. And I, I guess how uh, mass adventurers, superheroes, if you want to call them, Mm. Um, are always prepared. <laughs> yeah. In case think, of an emergency. And that Rorschach case was high profile. I mean, they sent all the best people there, too. Right. So it's not mm-hmm. like this would have, they would have gone over this with a fine tooth comb. Right. Well, they probably didn't need that much. They already found his regular suit, so I guess they weren't looking for other evidence because they didn't need it. They had him dead to rights on Moloch, you know? Yeah, so pretty he, much, right. It must have just been lazy police work. <laughs> Which surprises nobody. <laughs> not at all. Nobody's surprised. These police and, you know, and then they, it's, it's another piece of that interesting dynamic, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because there's the real tension between the real law enforcement authorities and the, the mass adventures that's prevalent through the whole piece. Right. Yep. So there's always that, that butting of heads because they want, they sort of have the same goal. And Hollis was a cop, remember? Uh, so there were there was sort of like a relationship, mm-hmm. and then it eroded over time, mm-hmm. and now they're totally oppositional. And now, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, like I would imagine that for Rorschach, sort of finding something police didn't or hiding something from the police successfully would be something he would take pride in. Right. Be excited about that. And then of course, you know, now that he's got his his face again <laughs> and right. his crazy and his crazy journal, mm-hmm. he can go ahead yeah, and send he can that. Get out. back to being himself. Yes. No <laughs> longer will he be the prisoner. Uh, now he's back. He's the the, the he's prisoner the that is again. Walter Kovacs. <laughs> right. He can now be he's not Warshak. just Warshak again. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh man! All right, so we are now sent to Antarctica. We cut to Ozymandias arriving in Antarctica in a in a plane that sure does seem to be landing vertically. If you look out there, that right. looks like landing pads, <laughs> not landing gear on that plane. We see Bubastis and two of the triplets. Uh, they're welcoming Adrian to his Antarctic retreat. There you see his pilot letting him in there. And then uh, the twi- the uh, triplets say, you know, um, welcome back. It's good to have you here. And they say, uh, we got dinner ready if you're hungry. He says, nope, we got stuff to do. Got a work to do. 
And then uh, they said he made a delivery. The three of us did it without telling anybody. No aides, right? So it's a mon- the monitors have been prepared. So then Adrian says, I'm going to watch a bunch of TV, random channels. I want to see what's going on. He tries to kind of tap into this like subconscious energy uh-huh. of the world. Like, what's the world displaying? How can I use this in a way other people won't realize uh, for business purposes? Right. And he says, this all says war, and we should buy accordingly. He says there's a heavy, um, you know, like a heavy sexual subtext. Remember the baby boom? He's like, we're going right. to buy short term. We're going to buy munitions. We're going to buy baby food, maternity foods. And then they start recording. Yep. He's getting like, prepared. Now, a- another thing to comment on, this is like a, um, I guess, a um, NFL <laughs> uh, um, uh, uh, NFL fans dream. Um, oh um, yeah, thing right. right here with the multiple screens. <laughs> so on, su- a- on on Sundays, man, Ozzy Mandius, he's like at home. <laughs> <laughs> the Sunday ticket, he had the Sunday ticket early, man. Do you think? Do you think he like? I mean, do you think he would root for the Jets, or do you think he'd be like a Giants guy? I mean, he's a New Yorker. Well, he has multiple options, man. He has multiple screens. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, we know he likes the Lakers, right? Like, for sure, he's a Laker Yeah, fan. yeah, yeah, yeah. Showtime definitely. Lakers, 1980s, yeah, he's dressed like yeah, this. I mean, yeah, come I on. I mean, who wouldn't? He's into the Lakers. Right, right, right. <laughs> I guarantee you, in current time, Ozymandias' favorite basketball player of all time has got to be Kobe. There's no way it's not Kobe right now. I can't. I won't even consider another person. <laughs> we'll probably figure that out when the show comes out. <laughs> <laughs> I bet we will. <laughs> Here we see Ozymandias in the front row. <laughs> Kobe throws in the ball. Ozymandias spins it on his finger and does a reverse 360 jam. Oh, man. Because he's that kind of athlete, right? That's that Ozymandias, man. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> They've been trying to recruit him and, you know, draft him. He mm. will not budge. He's so fast. He can take it to the rock. <laughs> 70 years old, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Ozymandias. Ozymandias. <laughs> oh, man. Making it rain. <laughs> the authority. <laughs> Just uh, dunking on, just dunking on just, fools. That's just, the new form. That's the real world superheroism. Just, just, dun- just dunking on fools, man. Oh, man. You can't draw a charge that close to the rim. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. So what he's doing? He's watching like he's have random channels and change them every hundred seconds, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, I guess he's just getting whatever they're showing. Um, and remember, there wasn't so much. Um, 24-hour cable news wasn't as huge a thing in '85, so there wasn't a lot of that. So he's really right. just viewing. He's not looking at the live events, right? He's looking at, um, he's just trying to get the sense of the shadow of, of well, what's happening. Yeah, he's trying to get a gauge and, you know, see, I, I guess, um, depending on what they're, you know, showing at the time, you know, you can, I guess, get a gauge on if the world is taking things, you know, seriously or is things escalating in certain areas, you know, of mm. the world, you know, uh, uh something in one part of the world may be broadcasting something different in another part of the world that can inform, uh, you know, what's going on in another section and everything. So, um, right. I guess if, 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 um, channel five is not showing cartoons, <laughs> you know, <laughs> then, um, or if can channel five is still showing tr- cartoons and everything, then, you know, everything is straight in that particular area. But once they start going towards the news or, um, uh, then, okay, well, I may, may need to pay attention to this. Um, look so, what he's looking at. He's got that. He's he's looking at that. Just look at the TV on that panel. Mm-hmm, the second mm-hmm. the second row on this page. Mm-hmm. Do you see what? Do you see the pictures the dude with the machine gun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the lady yeah. with the candy. Bar? Oh man, that either looks like Rambo or GI Joe. You know, yeah, one, right. One, so, one of the two. You know, he's looking at he's looking at commercials. It's so weird. Yeah. He says, "Just me and the world." Like mm-hmm. that. Like you know, that veneer is what really exists. <laughs> so, that's such an interesting. He's there with with his his cat, kitty mm-hmm. cat, Bubastis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he says, just me in the world. He's plugged. He feels like he's connected to everybody. He's like plugged right. in their vibrations. Right. Uh, then we cut back to Rorschach and Dan. Mm-hmm. They hate Rorschach does not like being at the bottom of the river, although it's the only safe place they can really be because who's looking for them there. Right. And uh, he, they're stuck on the river. He says, I'm not taking you up until it's dark. This is the thing I thought it was earlier. And he says, uh, this is no picnic. <laughs> uh, and then Rorschach's then like, you think I stink? <laughs> you think I stink or something? <laughs> Well, <laughs> and he says, you, you think it's unnecessary? And then he says, we're going to go get them. We're going to get the information we need. And this face is all I'll need. <laughs> he says, all I need. And he mm-hmm. throws it on, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so now they're discussing between 
the it, se- it seems like they're having sort of a little bit of a philosophical ar- argument between how do we get this information? Should we go try to you know find it in documents or should we basically go get it? Right. And Rorschach says we're gonna go get it. That's what he's what this conversation essentially amounts to. They kind of go through all the plot information. Uh, you know, they're all coming back around to the, you know. Dan thinks there's something even bigger afoot, and Rorschach keeps saying the masked killer explains it all. Right. It explains it all, but now they're sort of putting it together. All these people work for the same companies, the delivery company. Right. Pyramid and, and all, all these different uh, sort of shell corporations. Right. And he's finding and, all the connections and everything, or they're talking out the connections together. Yep. And then Dan calls uh, Rorschach, you know how hard it is being your friend? He calls him a goddamn lunatic. And he says, look, it's, it's, it's hard. We're stuck down here. Rorschach is being a, an a-hole. He tells him he's been, Rorschach says he's been lazing around a long time. <laughs> oh, boy. And then Rorschach extends his hand, says, you've been a good friend. And they try to move on. And uh, Rorschach doesn't really let go of, of Dan's hand. You see, he just, like, pull it away. Right. Uh, which is sort of weird. Well, um, it's uh, uh, one thing about, you know, him, um, you know, extending his hand like that and actually just admitting. I mean, that's just something that's not something that he does often, you know, just right. um, just true. admit, you know, to um, show that type of soft side to him, you know. But mm-hmm. did he Dan has been on his side, you know, for so long. He busted him out of prison, for Christ's sakes. Yep, <laughs> you <he> know, <laughs> so I mean, you, you can't really discount that. <laughs> So no. for him to show this side, it's, it's a really good way of showing his his character, you know. And I tell you what, man, if you ever bust me out of prison, <laughs> I promise you the longest handshake you've ever had in your entire life. <laughs> you will be so uncomfortable when that handshake Ooh, is done. Wee, I bet. Three minutes, you just start coughing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's exactly that's what my promise. <laughs> and that's my promise to all listeners. If you ever bust me out of prison again, the longest handshake of all time is ready and waiting for oh. you. <laughs> especially if especially if I also get to kill my arch nemesis at the same time. <laughs> you can hook that up. I mean, I'm 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 willing to do a long handshake for you. Uh, all right, so they say, uh, hey, let's go uh Let's go to the criminal fraternity, the criminal fraternity, and start plumbing the depths. So they're gonna go, you know, looking for answers, Rorschach style. Yeah, <laughs> they, just, buddy. they decide to move on the Rorschach way. Yeah, the, mu- the music is playing now, guys. Yes. <laughs> All right, and then let's curse back to curse of the Black Freighter. Oh man, right? we haven't seen Black Freighter in a minute. It's been a minute. Yeah. So here's what's happening. I'm, I'm just gonna kind of summarize because I'm sure you're reading this and you should be. Uh, the wording is excellent. So this dude is shipwrecked and now marooned in his own home, like on his own home beach, a little bit outside of town. And he sees a couple. It's a, a money lender and his like mistress. They're coming for an oceanside tryst. Uh, they have on, they're on horses and they discover his raft of corpses and a dead shark and <laughs> Lord knows what else at this point. <laughs> and they scream and then the uh, the sailor comes flying out of the you know the the knight and clobbers the money lender to death and then strangles his mistress uh and it takes longer than he had anticipated which is just such a <laughs> ugh, awful 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 that, awful that dark sense of humor that dark yeah, humor terrible right there. Hmm. <laughs> took, a little, little, took a little longer than I thought strangling her you know so he hey. thinks that the pirates have already come so this guy is still well dressed he's out and about he must be a collaborator so he doesn't feel bad about killing him right um, if you flip the page Gus is now talking new stand Gus is talking about how everything's crazy everybody's scared they'll drop it tonight you know the, then he means the atomic bombs and then at the bottom, you'll see the Veet method is prominently featured there at the bottom. The Adrian Veet method of uh, mm-hmm. bodybuilding mm-hmm. That's what that is. And then uh, the horses only understand a little. My goodness, that's oof. that's such a, a haunting line. Um, so, so this man has now, you know, the sailor has now murdered uh, two kind of innocent people. Right. It's, it's, Very uh, innocent. it's kind of. <laughs> and this is all written in a way to see to, so that his madness is evident. So this isn't like an interpretation. So it's designed to be written in a way where you're like, what is going wrong with this guy? Mm-hmm. Like he's obviously just flipping out. Um, so there, there are some some people in t- like you see those guys in the hats there. Yeah, they're like a doomsday cult. Right, they're here to talk about you know the end of the world. And we see Eastern Europe tanks are massing, conflicts escalates. Things are getting uh, worse. The last line from the Black Freighter here is, um, I would venture amongst evil men and make them fear me, right? 
And then the next panel is the bouncer with a bloody face and someone going, oh, no, at that, that uh, was it Smile and Dan's or Happy Dan's bar, that uh, the same <laughs> bar they went to before. Back. <laughs> He's going to make these men fear him. Oh, man. Yep. And he says, I missed you while we were in prison. Um, you know, who knows a guy named the name of Roy Victor Chess. He's now dead. We wouldn't. We would hate for you to have to tell us, but we'll torture you until you do. And then they all look at that one dude. <laughs> they all kind of stare at him like it's him for sure. This is ultimate Batman tendency right here. This whole panel. Oh here, yes. Man. I mean, you know, from the introduction. To, I mean, from the from the way he enters Batman to, to, to him getting this um, you know, um, hand crushed with the bottle. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is this could be any Batman, you know, any Batman from yeah, any, any Batman random punk, bat right? any random Batman story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. This is one of those things where he says there are 320 bones in the human body and I'll break every <laughs> single one of them until you tell me what I want to know. <laughs> That's the Batman tendency. Uh, Rorschach has already done this so many times in front of all these people they don't even bother like making him prove it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he's already ready to go. Right. And then he says, I'm going to shove the, but he says, I'm going to shove the glass in your face. And Rorschach just smashes the glass in his hand and oh, squeezes. Man. Yeah. Yeah. I love that transition when, when he asked about, you know, and everybody just looks at who the yeah, culprit right. is and everything. And they, he's like, you bastards, I buy your drinks and you sell me out. What kind of town <laughs> is this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. man. He's like, I'm not getting messed up by Rorschach, man. Oh, man. You you must not know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh man. So uh so Rorschach interrogates and we find out that uh he was working, he got like his boss at the ship at the freight company mm-hmm. is the one who got him to get Roy to do the, the hit. He gave him two envelopes, one with cash, one with instructions, and he had to find a contact. Mm-hmm. Uh so he kinda he sort of was the middleman in the in, in the uh murder attempt. Um, and then he finds that people are getting killed. Like everyone that was involved with the plan other than him is dead now. Uh, he says, it's just a matter of time. I need protection. Mm-hmm. And then um, he says, you know, they're threatening me. These people are being threatened. You know, I didn't even realize what was going on until I saw the dude on the news. And then there's a, a, t- a knot top sitting over there. And uh, Night Owl says, something bothering you? And this is where uh, he says, look, I'm not connected with the murder of Hollis Mason. And Dan doesn't realize... Dan's like, oh my God, Hollis is dead. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. And, and then, uh, yeah, you know that ticks him off. You know, oh man, him like and he, Hollis he, was he, super close. Yeah, I mean, this is a guy who's been. I mean, it's been twenty five years since he became Night Owl. You yeah. know, for Hollis, mm-hmm. pretty much. I mean, this is a long term relationship. It's like his father relationship. Yep, yep. To so hear this, this scream, and uh, and we see Dan, much like the, um, much like the sailor from Black Freighter starts choking the life out of this guy who he says who murdered him he's doing the rorschach method here uh which is terrifying to everybody Mm -hmm. and then rorschach has to be like hey come on don't you can't murder this dude in here (laughs) and they leave and dan dan is obviously very taken with the fact that uh you know that his mentor is dead and he says must not even seen it on the news it must just have been like a passing thing yeah, I mean okay. they've they've been going through a whole lot, and you know this is something. I mean, why would um, you know, um, Night Owl Grave Driver be concerned with you know what's happening on the news and everything with getting, uh, the beating um Jupiter um <laughs> I mean not Jupiter but Jesbeck, mm-hmm. Lori and busting uh, Rorschach out of prison and everything in the midst of so everything. Busted- Busted Rorschach out of prison, mm-hmm. rescued those people from the fire, mm-hmm. you know, and then he had like the literally the most famous and powerful being in the universe in his living room for five <laughs> seconds, for five seconds steal yeah. his, to steal, steal his, girl. his girlfriend mm-hmm. yep. <laughs> and then disappear. Oh, then gone. So this hasn't yeah. even been on his radar. Uh-uh, and then with World War Three, no one else is thinking about oh, that no. easily. Mm-mm, mm-mm. But yeah, when it hits him, it hits him hard, you know, so he's about to, to damn near kill the guy, you know. <laughs> And then he says, look, and then Rorschach says, well, you know, an unidentified game where he supports the mass killer theory. And Dan gets all mad. He says, look, I'm just trying to comfort you. We're going to get the mass killer. We're going to get revenge. <laughs> he says, oh, OK. And then he says this line about uh, how Adrian once said that Egyptians regarded death as a voyage. Um, but Rorschach says, sure, if you can afford to go first class like the pharaohs, but the rest of us travel in steerage. Oh, That's man. so That's not a neat deep. little. Pretty, pretty deep. 
pretty deep. <laughs> yeah. All right, and now we're on the... Um, okay, so now we transition to the ship that's carrying all the scientists and movie special effects people and artists and writers. Okay, so that's where we are here. Mm-hmm. And it's the writer, Shay, and the artist, what's her name, Yura, uh, are talking. That's their text bubbles. That's a conversation they're having. We see the people they mention, the scientists, the geneticist guy, Fernice. Uh, they use the human brain to make this special effect. They're shipwrecked on an island themselves here. They're going to be leaving the island. And, um, you know, Shay and Nira are in the uh, in the cargo hold. You know, they're in a place where they have a little bit of privacy. Right. And they find, what are you seeing? What's wrong? And then uh, Shay sees the it's a bomb, an enormous bomb. And we see the the ship blow up. So all those scientists, uh, all those scientists, everyone that worked on that movie is gone. Right. And we see the moon go down in silence. All right. We see the moon go down in silence with that little that drawing of the um, you see the drawing there in the last panel of the uh, of the squid special looking, effect, the squid, yeah, whatever right. the hell that whatever, thing is, whatever whatever that is, you know. Um, the abomination is what I will call the it. The eye in know. the middle, you know. Um. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty. What an um, abomination! This is a very this is a, this is a very cinematic panel from the way it started um, on page seventeen, mm-hmm. <clears throat> all the way to when the um, ship actually blew up and everything. So, yeah, very very cinematic in its um in its um, execution. You know, for us to visualize how uh, he realized that oh man, this is <sighs> we're about to die. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I mean, and and he and you know, Max doesn't say anything. He sees what it is, mm-hmm. and he can see he can see that it's explosives connected to a few. So you know, they're just you know they they fell in love with each other and now they're gone. Right. <clears throat> just the way of the world. No, I'm not gonna get that deep. So, <laughs> all right. So now, uh, you know, Dan and Rorschach are investigating. Um, they're got V V Tower. Right. They want to help. They want Adrian's help. How did they get this- in? Then how did they get into this place? Oh, they it climbed must have through the window. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah. Mm-hmm. Rorschach, well, he's just a window climber, man. Yeah, I mean, what yeah, are you going to do? That's what you he show does. this man a door, and he's like, God created windows. And he jumps, jumps in. <laughs> right. Yeah. Although he also likes busting locks, you know, what mm-hmm. can you say? Yeah, pretty much. All right. So they say, where is Adrian? Adrian's in Karnak, which is that place in Antarctica we saw earlier. Mm-hmm. And he said, I thought Adrian could help us with this. Then Rorschach starts talking, right? And legit... <laughs> Let <laughs> shit starts talking for like the next three pages straight, pretty much, right? <laughs> so we see uh, they sort of switch uh, switch roles. So Rorschach is all silent. Remember the very right. first issue mm-hmm. and that silent detection, mm-hmm. and now he's explaining what he's seeing. So he's just telling Dan, right? Yeah, so there's yeah. a reason in the media for him to do this, which is why it's different from earlier. He says they find a chart showing all these calamities that are converging in the mid '90s, right? All these catastrophes, environmental decline, hazard escalation index, population. Nuclear issues. And then uh, Rorschach starts talking his way through what's going on. That there's probably, a, you know, what's going on with this company. You know, it starts talking about the pharaohs. And then the whole time Dan's just figuring out the password to Adrian's computer. Mm-hmm. Which is just Ramsey's the second. Uh, which seems like a bad password, but it's the 80s. You know? <laughs> it's the 80s, right? It's the 80s. So it's like, uh, it's, uh, you know, he's probably surprised he knows how to type. You know, that's how things were back then. So, so, um, so, a, a, a question here, and I'm, yeah. I wasn't totally clear. I probably still just not clear now. So, they're investigating. Um, they're they're in Adrian's tower. So, are we meant to believe that they're investigating him, or just um following like the trail that um that's leading up to you know to his um to his like his holdings and everything, and think, uh, um why. Why is Night Owl, why is Dan, you know, trying to access his um computer? What what would be the so, reason for him to be suspicious? Uh, enough starting, to try to um go ahead. Well, he sees that pyramid, right? And they're talking about the pyramid company, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he starts putting the dots together that way because it's like all this Egyptian imagery, like all that Rorschach, that page where Rorschach's talking, he's talking about Anubis mm-hmm. and how the pharaohs wanted to go to, you know, to heaven mm-hmm, and uh mm-hmm. you know, they they had uh you know all this other stuff. So it's all this. Egypt- He's talking about all this Egyptian reliquary, and then like Dan kind of realizes like the pyramid is front and center in the first panel here. Right. And he's like, "What is this?" So he searches um, for pyramid deliveries, mm-hmm. right? Which is the company name. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if there's anything in here. And then he gets us the password. Mm-hmm. Two guesses, by the way. That's pretty good. <laughs> Dan's on it, buddy. 
So Ramses II is the Egyptian name for o- Ozymandias is really the uh, Greek name for Ramses II is the way to actually think of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Ramses II is the password. He pulls all the files, and then it, it's obvious at this point that Adrian Adrian owns Pyramid Delivery. Mm-hmm. The person behind all of this is Adrian, and Dan is just shocked. Super shocked. Shocked. He says all this Egyptian stuff. He just thought it was BS. Big reveal here. <laughs> yeah, this is it. This is the first time they acknowledge the real mastermind behind everything is Adrian. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the comedian's murder, the exile of Dr. Manhattan. He's behind everything. The poisoning of uh, the cancer poisoning of, uh, you know, all of Dr. Manhattan's friends. Right. Beyond what was done, you know, naturally through the work they were doing in the desert. Um, you know, so all of it. He said, uh, you know, uh, so, <clears throat> so yeah, we have to go to Adrian. We have to go stop whatever. Whatever Adrian's doing, we have to go. So Rorschach makes a final journal entry where he describes where he's going. He says, um, you know, he doesn't have any regrets. He says, no regrets. I do it again. Lived a life free of compromise. And he steps, he's, and to step into this shadow, he steps into this <coughs> shadow now without complaint. And he mails it somewhere. Puts it into the um the 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 mailbox there, you know. Yeah, yeah. Just puts it, <laughs> drops it in the mail. Tricks Dan into thinking he has to check a mail drop, and then dips off to Antarctica. Keep 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 an eye on that. Keep an eye on that. Yeah, uh, and then uh, Gus is talking about how we didn't want a war, and then we're. This is sort of some of the. Uh, it's sort of set uh, against the Black Freighter, where the sailor is. Uh, he is sort of propped up the the female the mistress on mm-hmm. her horse and then he is wearing the money lenders clothes he leaves his corpse in the beach and he r- goes off toward david's town his home he sees a pirate sentry that he says uh you know they must be out i'm gonna have to try to avoid suspicion but it's just a scarecrow <clears throat> you know it's not anything other than that right so he's he's you know obviously out of his mind that's what the words will know there uh other things are going crazy um we hear that uh what Pale horses playing Madison Square Garden, <laughs> <laughs> which is a uh, you know a reference to the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, and then um, we see the sailor is is hurriedly making his way toward David's town. He says, "Dear God, let me have vengeance then, and then die swiftly." He says, "I'm going to get my revenge." He's kind of messed some stuff up. Mm-hmm. All right, so now he says uh, we also see delivered in the hands uh, of a higher judgment. And we see Rorschach's, um, you know, Rorschach's journal being taken through the mail sorting department and to the New Frontiersman, where they throw it in the crank pile. <laughs> of course, right. You of know. course, because why would you put anything like that anywhere else? <laughs> and then we see the birds could be in the air right now is the end of that little chapter where he says, hey, we should have, you know, the Russians could be, you know, murdering us. The birds could be in the air and we flash over to Archie just flying through the clouds. Right. There's more important things. Well, I mean, just to back up to the back of this, but there's more important things mm-hmm. going on in the world. So we need to get on that and, you know, just throw this 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 very important document in a crank file right. that they have no realization of what it is and everything. Because, I mean, to, to be fair to them, it's, it's a lot of stuff going on. So they have no, no time to 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 um, investigate, you know, just something that's or it's arbitrary as a journal. You know, right. Um, they will get to it at a certain point. <laughs> we'll see. But not now. They're going to burn it on the first of January if they need to. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> OK. <laughs> All right, so now Rorschach and uh, Night Owl are flying to Antarctica and Archie, but he, Archie doesn't do so great in the in the, the ice. Our ice is stalling them out. They sort of, uh, you know, crash land into Antarctica, and they take uh, speeder bikes over to uh, Adrian's hideout. They're mm-hmm. on their speeder, like uh, hover bikes, which they use to get uh, underboss or subboss or whatever his name was. It's pretty nifty. Right. Uh, I think this is this is a funny scene because he because uh, you know Rorschach doesn't want to change his outfit at all, and Night Owl puts on this thing. He calls it a snowsuit, and it looks like a just a, a wicked winter snow owl. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> like he, I love that he kept he has all these. You know, this is a Batman tendency mm-hmm. for sure, right? Yep, definitely. Yeah, having yeah. a different owl suit for every possible outcome. Mm-hmm. Um, Always prepared. super interesting. Never know. Yeah, he doesn't care. And then we see that Adrian's watching them come, and he says, "It's all right, girl." And he says, everything's all right. <laughs> Adrian has it all planned out and everything, so it doesn't yeah. matter if they're coming. So he, he, he has it covered, so everything is all right. Outside in the distance, a wild cat gro- did grow. <clears throat> Two riders were approaching. The wind, be- the wind began to howl by Bob Dylan. So we mm-hmm. get that quote at the end. 
So, yep. um, yeah, things are coming. You know, things are um, things are just moving along. This just chapter actually went kind of fast. Yeah, because it's I know. basically you know just just moving the plot along, just um, just just escalating everything a lot quicker. Because I mean, um, when you start from where the the where the graphic novel started and everything, we had to get mm-hmm. a lot of character stuff. We got all that out the way. So we now we know who the characters are. You know, yep. so this is pretty much getting into okay. This we we get into what's actually happening, you know, um, and escalating on into the end game. So we know as so to tying this back to the comedian's murder too. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so at this point, we know that the reason the comedian was murdered is because Malk apartment was bugged. Mm-hmm. It's also the reason Rorschach was able to be pinned there because they had all the information about what he was doing, and they were able to frame him because they knew when he was coming back. So they mm-hmm. were able to do all that. Right. Uh, they heard Eddie. You know, they heard Eddie have this nervous breakdown. He couldn't keep himself together. He was going to tell someone. He was, uh, you know, a loose end, and they tied it up. Right. Okay. So that's the. So as far as the reason why Eddie Blake was murdered, we now know that right. that is settled. Right. Uh, we also know that most likely Ozzy Mandius is behind that. Right. Okay. And is also behind all the efforts to silence Doctor Manhattan. Um, and to discredit him through the cancer. So we now we know that's what we know that Ozzy Mandius has done. Right. So we don't know why. Nope. Don't know so why. So that's something that we're guess I'm guessing that Rorschach and uh Night Owl are looking to figure out. Yep. Why that did he it. um destroy that boat? Why did he kill all those artists and everything? Why why mm-hmm. did he um why was those artists, you know, painting that, you know, <clears throat> that monster, you know, looking right. thing or whatever. So we're we're trying to figure out what's going on with that. And why do we care? Why do we even care, you know? And we should because they put it in. You know what I mean? So it matters. Yeah. So they don't put anything in here that doesn't matter. So East, right. e- e- little Easter eggs are are really, you know, uh, uh, hard eggs, <laughs> if you want to call it that. Something mm-hmm. actually um, is real integral to buy, even to the point of where um, um, uh, Rorschach drops a mail, drops his um, note, his, his journal into the mail drop and everything. And then we mm-hmm. see that um, we see we, we 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 are led to, to think, that OK, well. If someone gets this, <laughs> right, you know, and eventually reads it, they're going to know everything, you know. Rorschach's a notorious figure. He's mm-hmm, famous, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. We know that because of all the news stories about him. Mm-hmm. So his, his journal is going to be something of repute, and it has all the information about Adrian trying to get rid of Dr. Manhattan. Mm-hmm. And it calls him what, and I cannot imagine a more, you know, a more difficult adversary, right, is what he kind of says there. Right, right. And, and to that end, the end of the, the, the coda here, the stuff that we get is, is information about Adrian. So things about his bodybuilding stuff. He's mm-hmm. going to change nostalgia into something else. He likes the Bubastis doll, but not the other ones. <laughs> we see them making the Moloch, the Rorschach, and the Night Owl. He's like, ah, I don't really like those two dolls. <laughs> We're not going to do Rorschach and Moloch. <laughs> We're not doing Rorschach and Night Owl. I don't like them. Uh, no thanks. <laughs> but he does like Bubastis. He said, I'll have to get one. I'll give it to Bubastis when I see her. Mm-hmm. Because there's going to be a like a Transformer style Ozymandias cartoon next year. Oh man, I mean he he just has it going on with his brand, you know. Um, he has a nostalgia thing going on, you know. Um, he's he's going from toys all the way to perfume. Man, that mm-hmm. is very. <laughs> he's just all over the place with his um, you know, with the the Veet brand, you know. <laughs> and if you read if you read the. Uh, the thing where he's talking under the nostalgia thing, he says he wants a new line of perfume. It's going to name it Millennium. It'll be forward-looking and modern. Mm-hmm. It'll be controversial. So I want it to be like that. Mm-hmm. So he's he's changing his focus from backwards-looking to forward-looking. Mm. It's something that's important to see here. Mm-hmm. And remember, yep. he's a perfect businessman. Yep. Like when you look at what he's done, he, he he's risen to where he is in business from essentially his name as Ozymandias right. because he's never made a bad move. Like he's right. never made a bad investment. He always makes exactly the perfect investment right. because he can see, you know, he's like a chess master. He can see the next 10 moves, yeah, yeah. Where the next he, 10 moves are going to go. Yeah, everything accounted for. So, um, <clears throat> um, yeah, uh, VD has everything. Adrian has everything um, accounted for because like, like Scott said, he's that perfect businessman. Even um, going back to like, uh, you know, a few chapters ago, where he was fighting that um, one guy, mm-hmm. you know, he was so perfect in his movement and everything to take him out. You know, um, Adrian, he was always deemed as like the smartest, uh, you know, the yes. smartest man in the world, you know, has everything covered and everything. So it's just kind of funny how Rorschach, <coughs> you know, puts this journal, you know, you can't mm-hmm. account for the, the, I guess the thing is you can't account for everything. So has right. Adrian accounted for 
something like that. You know, mm-hmm. if 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 Rorschach, if if um, him and Night Owl discovered the things that they discovered, and Rorschach has wrote it in his journal, written it in his, in his journal, and delivered it, um, had it delivered to like the um, the the newspaper, um, has uh, has Adrian accounted for that? Right. Is he that perfect? You know. So there is that that um that that flaw that this perfect person, you know, mm-hmm. he that he strived to be, which um uh, we'll see in the next two chapters. You know, how is that going to affect him? And, you know, beyond that, Adrian is sort of like this, uh, you know, he he is he's very direct in getting what he wants done. He always has like a secondary and a tertiary. And he keeps telling people death is a journey. Right. Like he, you know, it's pretty obvious at this point. One, he's hired his own hitman, Right. (laughs) Like he definitely hired that dude to come get him. So he did that for sure. But what we're seeing here, I mean, none of what we're seeing is actually what he's doing. You know what right. I mean? Like we're seeing what he's doing to, to, like protect his plan and to stop. You know what I mean? Intercession mm-hmm. and to get rid of Doctor Manhattan to distract the mm-hmm. other you know costume vigilantes that could come after him that he can't mm-hmm. buy, mm-hmm. basically. But we don't know what his actual plan is yet. No, no. It seems yet. that he's going to be pivoting into future looking. So he sees a crisis here and he maybe is going to take advantage of the crisis. But what, like, what is he trying to do here in the shadow of the Third World War? Right. Hmm. So we know, like they say, we've been hearing in the news, like sometimes a cover up worse than a crime. <laughs> yeah. um, so what's what's he covering up? Yeah, like what's the crime here? What's he done? We 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 shall see about that. You know, we um, know the what, but not the why. Right, right. Ozzy Mandius is a really good puppet master. I mean, he's he's crazy. He's yes. like Mister Glass. <laughs> <laughs> Pulling all Except these strings and accounting for all these these events and everything. Man, I mean, he's. Whew, I mean, it's like the guy could see the future. You know. I mean, he's like an optimal human being. Like I said, I, I <laughs> sincerely believe that if he were real and he were like, you know, in his 50s or 60s when Kobe was playing, he would have tried to, you know what I mean? He would have like <laughs> taken the ball off him and done all that <laughs> stuff like while he was at the Laker game, you know? Oh, yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> that seems that type of guy he is. Uh, and that's 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 how I see him as like some sort of, you know, he's a paragon, but he's he's got his own. You know, methods don't seem to be. He doesn't seem to care about morality and methods. You know what I mean? He's willing no, to get his hands right. dirty to do what he needs to do. Right for the great, for the is, quote unquote greater good. Exactly, and this is all. This is the first time we get a real good look at him either. Yeah, I mean, we've seen him for glimpses before, but we get to spend pages with him and see what his like methods are and what right. he looks like and what it's like when he does his his things. And we find out at the end here that he is not orchestrating things to prevent anything. Like it doesn't seem like he's trying to stop World War Three because it, he's taken. Mm -hmm. under you know what i mean he's taken the underpinnings of society kind of knocked him out from under everyone by having dr manhattan do it go away right right all this stuff that he's he has his um you know has going on and everything it's like you know what is what what does it lead to what does it have to do with anything you know what Mm -hmm. um how does it tie into anything and how you know if if this is supposed to be for like the greater good and everything how does what does it lead up to you know, is is pretty much what this whole thing has all been about. Not only the mystery of who killed the comedian and everything, mm-hmm. but what all is it? What all it? What is all this actually leading up to? You know, and we know well, World Three is potentially about to happen. Well, let's let's remember we've seen a memory of his before. Mm-hmm. So we saw his memory of the Crime Stoppers meeting in '65 was right. all him. Like it was his from his viewpoint. So we saw the comedian saying, "None of this is going to matter because soon the nukes are going to be flying like June bugs." <laughs> Right. So that that was of his memory of the Mm -hmm. person that, you know, uh, we know now that he orchestrated the comedian's death. So this was something he was thinking about as he was burying the comedian. Right. So that's something that I think is an interesting thing to bring up. Hmm. Okay. All right. All right. And that is chapter 10. That's 10. Hooray. Oh, man. Uh, Yeah. Like I said, that was a quick chapter there. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's. The 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 um snowball is uh, is rolling down the hill real fast, guys. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> you know we're at the it, point where it's like this happened, then this happened, then this happened, mm-hmm, then this happened. You know what I mean? Yep, yep. And we'll see what's about to happen. So absolutely, can't wait till next issue. Mm. So unlike um, unlike people that re- read this in real time, we will not have to wait. <laughs> we will just be turning the page and moving on. Uh, so, so that's so, lucky us. So I decided for you guys who are actually new to this, and you know, just seeing what um what 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 is um. What is the greatness that Alan Moore? This was a really intricate um, way of explaining a lot of the plot. Um, mm. Like you said, it, it's, it's, it's real dense and it's real constructed, really, really good from the way um, um, 
uh, Rorschach, you know, just talks as opposed to, you know, him in the early chapters not really speaking in certain panels when he doesn't have anybody around. He's just right. continually talking, talking, talking. And Night Owl is um, doing, it, you know, his own little side investigation um, based on stuff he's hearing Rorschach think, you know, um, says and slowly putting stuff together. So it's mm -hmm. a really good way that him and Dave Givens, you know, constructed that to give us a visualization of what's going on. Uh, what we, we refer to how comics were done back in the 80s, it wasn't done like this. So this was a very, really great new way to um, to storytell in the comic, you know, you know, in the comic industry. Yep. Uh, one thing I want to point out here, and this is something that if you go to that that page where um, that page where Ozymandias is kind of in his um, in Karnak. Yeah, he's just sitting down to watch TV. That big top panel. Uh huh. I think it's page. Um, what page is it on the comic? Well, anyway, in the background, do you see that little relief? Do you see that that uh, kind of like a mural up there? Right. That is a mural of Alexander the Great. Huh. And that is the Gordian knot. Huh. Now Alexander the oh, wow. Great. So Alexander the Great was challenged. Uh, there was a. I'm going to tell. I'm going to tell this now because it's neat. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so Alexander the Great was challenged when he was conquering, uh, like Turkey. Mm -hmm. Okay, he was in a city called Gordius, and Gordius said, "You know, uh, the the legend here is whoever unties this knot, whoever can unt undo this knot, this humongous, complicated, impossible knot, you cannot untie. Whoever unties it will be the king of all of Asia, right? Mm, okay. So this was a challenge set forth to Alexander. It was designed to test him. So Alexander." produced his sword and cut it in half and said, I have undone the knot. Wow. Okay. Now wow. remember the lot, what was the name of the lock company that's been messing with everyone's locks? Uh, that was Gordian. The Gordian knot lock company. Mm. Mm. Man, that is deep, man. <laughs> oh goodness gracious. That's wow. Right. Wow. And, and, and the thing is, it's so, uh, it's so deep casually put in the back like you know mm -hmm. you wouldn't really pick up on that easter egg i i mean this is the first time i'm actually seeing it based on you um just bringing it up and everything and i yeah. know no history about that so it really goes to show if you they they that that you know more and um um gibbons really took time to place certain um certain elements into a panel just yep. to tie things back to other things like the Gordian, um, you know, lot company and everything. That is fantastic. Great, 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 and great also, pick up there. <laughs> I also want to mention that the imagery of the cutting the Gordian knot, right? Mm -hmm. It's this idea that the simplest solution is sometimes destructive. Mm. Like sometimes you have to break. You can't just, you know, you can't waste your time. I'm trying to figure out how to fix this problem when what you can do is simply eliminate the problem. Right, right. Right. That's what the story is. That's the that's the point of the story, at least to my understanding. Mm -hmm. well, I'm taking a little time to study these matters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I've taken no time to study these matters. Hey, well, that's a great pickup, and you know, um, I'm certain. Like I said, we pick up things every every time we look at this. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the first time I'm um um you know, uh, it, and it just makes me appreciate even more how um um how much time they took to put this thing together. You know, it's really incredible and super incredible. All right, guys. So, um, again, you can um, find or give us feedback at watching Watchmen at NerdCyclopedia dot com. Um, you can um, uh, tweet us at Watchmen um, Podcast one, no T at the end, just one um, on Twitter. Um, um, find us on Facebook. Um, join our Facebook group at Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen. Um, mm -hmm. that's our Facebook group. Also, um, check out our website, nursecyclopedia.com. Again, on Facebook, we have a Facebook, um, um, page, um, nursecyclopedia as well. So we got all these places and, uh, of course you can listen to our podcast everywhere. Stitcher, YouTube, um, Spotify, iTunes, Google play, everywhere that you're, you listen to your favorite podcast. We are there and you better be there or else again. Because I'm telling you, man, if I get any non five star reviews, I'm just gonna give everybody the business. Everybody, get them, get them, get them, boys. That's all I do is give them the business. <laughs> all right. So until then, oh, yeah, we got a good, got a uh, another good chapter coming up there, Scott. Absolutely, I'm really excited to get into the. You know, this is one of those pivotal chapters. Uh, you know, we're really coming to the end here. Only two to go. 
mm-hmm. and things are up in the air. You know, yep. we don't know the status of the entire world. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. But we do know one thing that the characters don't know, and that's that Dr. Manhattan is coming back. Oh, man, he is coming back. You know, it started off small. It's going to end off big, you know. Uh, started Absolutely. off with the murder of the comedian, and, you know, now we're about to find out what the fate of the world is. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. See you guys. See ya. Yeah, I noticed that um, that little, like, it's like a Bosley from the back there. Oh, man. Of his little that lair. is dope. That is, that is really tight. Yeah, my fraternity did a bunch of stuff with, like, the Gord- <laughs> our, uh, our little handbook that we had to memorize for information about our fraternity was called the Gordian Knot. Uh, so, you know, I, I have a little bit of extra knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, <laughs> certainly know that certainly helps. That certainly helps, bro. Yeah, it really did.